Hi class, welcome back. It's Dr. Lindner. In the next video, we are going to draw out how the blood flows through the heart. This gets a little bit messy, so we'll try and keep it a little bit neat. Let's let's make this uh, black first. We'll try and keep this like that. So let's let's do this. Okay, and let's make this nice and thick because we know that the left side of the heart is systemic circulation. The, the left side of the heart is larger and thicker because it has a much big, uh, more challenging job than the right side. This is pumping blood to the entire body, whereas the right side is just has to pump blood uh, to the lungs. Okay, so let's make this blue now. And let's say we know that this is the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. Okay, now how does blood get into the right atrium? It's going to have to go and get in there from three different ways, okay? We'll call this one, one A, one B, and one C. So one A, this is the superior vena cava. So let's call one A, superior vena cava. We'll call one B, inferior vena cava and let's call 1c the coronary sinus coronary sinus so 1a the superior vena cava we're going to have blood coming in from the head neck right arm and left arm all that deoxygenated blood into the right atrium from 1b the inferior vena cava we're going to have blood coming in from the abdominal area from the lower extremities up into the right atrium and then the coronary sinus is where all the deoxygenated blood from the heart itself find its way to get into the right atrium. Now we have blood filling up the right atrium. All the blood is in here and the pressure is building up and we have to find a way to drive that blood down into the right ventricle, contracting superior to inferior. Most of the blood passively flows into the right ventricle because of gravity, but 10, 15% of it is going to contract. We have pectinate muscles in the right atrium that will push the blood, and it's got to go through number two. Number two is a valve, and that's called the tricuspid valve. So blood has to push and open the tricuspid valve so that we can get blood into number three. And number three is the right ventricle. Now the pressure in the right ventricle builds and builds and builds. So now all the blood is down in here. And we know that the blood here is emptied because now it's in the right ventricle. Now the pressure builds up and we have to get the blood out of here. Remember the ventricles contract from inferior to superior, inferior to superior, upward. So now let's create another opening here. Simple drawing. These are the lungs. This is the other lung. So now as the blood pumps up from inferior to superior, number two, the tricuspid valve is forced shut. And number four, which is the pulmonary semilunar valve, 
is forced open, pumping blood into number five, which is the pulmonary trunk, into number six, which is going to be the right and left pulmonary arteries. And finally, it gets into number seven, which is the lungs. Now, pick up oxygen in here. We dump the CO2, we pick up oxygen, and now we need this oxygenated blood to find its way into the left atrium. Okay, so we're using red here because it's dumping all the oxygenated blood into the left atrium. All right, so number eight, eight will be the right and left pulmonary veins. Veins bring blood to the heart. This is oxygenated. You have all this oxygenated blood filling up the left atrium, the pressure builds and builds and builds. And what's gonna happen is this valve is gonna be forced open from the pressure. We'll call that number nine, that valve, which is called the bicuspid valve. The bicuspid opens. We have all the blood pooling up into the left ventricle as the pressure down here builds. Remember the pressure in the left atrium, when it contracts, it goes superior to inferior. When the ventricles contract, it's inferior to superior and down to above. So now the blood starts to leave the left atrium. It fully fills the left ventricle and the pressure builds and builds and builds. Let's make another valve right here, the circle. We'll call that, uh, let's see, I'm sorry, number nine is bicuspid. Let's call this number 10, which is the left ventricle. And then when the blood pressure builds up, this is gonna contract inferior to superior pushing blood up, opening this valve. That's number 11. That valve, number 11, is the aortic semilunar valve. Okay? And at the same time that the blood is pushing up, number nine, which is the bicuspid, is closed. It closes so you don't get any regurgitation of blood in the upper chamber. Now this aortic semilunar opens and this happens. So we have to follow this. So this is the ascending aorta. As it goes up, it ascends. This is the arch of the aorta. And then it's the descending aorta. And there's three valves of the trumpet. We'll call this, um, well, let's see how we did 11 aortic semilunar. Let's do 12. Let's call this up here number 12, which is ascending aorta. And then let's call this number 13. 13 is the arch of the aorta. And then going down this way, we'll call this 13. I'm uh, sorry, 13, we'll call it 14, my bad. 14. 14 is the descending aorta. Descending aorta. After the descending aorta, it comes down, down here in the stomach. Let's call this 15. 
15, abdominal aorta. And then it goes all the way down. Now we're into the thighs where you're going to have, you know, the right and left common iliacs. Okay. So up here, let's call this A, B, and C. And if we were to draw a line right through there, this goes to the right side. B and C are going to go to the left side. So B, let's do B first. B is the left common carotid. And then we'll do C, which is the left subclavian artery. So the B is the uh, left common carotid, and then C is the left subclavian. Subclavian means like sub is under, clavian is for clavicle, so it goes under the clavicle. And then common carotid, sometimes they call it the carotids because these are the ones that get blocked in the neck uh, going up into the brain. Um, anytime you see the word common in a blood vessel, it's safe to assume that it's going to fork into an internal and external artery. And the common carotid does divide as it goes up the neck into a left internal carotid and a left external carotid. Okay, so B and C go, are going to the left side of the body. A is called the brachio. brachiocephalic artery. Now, in the word brachiocephalic, we see two words. We see brachio. We know that means arm. And cephalic means head. So this artery, number A, is going to divide into blood vessels that will feed the arm and into blood vessels that will feed the head. So they will eventually divide into a common carotid and into a subclavian eventually and we'll see that uh, coming up okay so that is the blood flow i know it's kind of sloppy off to the side but you can re-watch it and be able to draw this out and if you could do it you own this concept of blood flow use the different colors, draw the left side larger, just like I did, the left atrium and ventricle larger than the right side, and number them and, and test yourself. If you can visualize it in your head, then you could see the, the dissections uh, in the labs.